Yeah. All right, good deal. Hey guys, it's Thursday, January 28th. I only have three eBay orders to ship out today, which is really not that surprising because I didn't list anything yesterday. I was just buying yesterday. I was in the car pretty much all day long, so didn't get anything listed. And when you don't list on eBay, you don't sell on eBay. After I get these orders packed, I'm gonna head across town to pick up some more stuff that I want. I actually did some bidding last night on an online auction and got quite a bit of stuff. So I'm looking forward to picking that up. Let's get to work. First thing is on the E4 shelf, it is this lantern frame right here no globe unfortunately i got this um in a big like bulk buy of stuff i made i think like two or three weeks ago there was another lantern that i bought with this i paid 60 for the pair i sold the other one for 90 and this one just sold for 34.99 plus shipping next is in b51 right down here it is a charging station for a metal detector battery selling this for my mother-in-law that sold for $29.99 for shipping next thing's down at a5 it is this box right here these are some vintage he-man masters of the universe toys that i got from danny and parker the piqua resellers these were incomplete and it's really hard to gauge a you know a value on stuff like this when it's missing certain pieces and condition and everything so i decided to do an auction did all three horses. I started them at a dollar and they sold for $30 plus shipping. Every video I try to show you guys one thing that I pack, I have not done a good job of that the last few videos. So I'm gonna show you how I will pack this lantern frame. There's nothing really breakable on it. Well, I'm trying to get that down. There's nothing really breakable on it, but I'm still gonna protect it with some bubble wrap. All right, now that it's bubble wrapped, I'm gonna pick out a box for it. I think this one is gonna be just about perfect. Yeah, not too bad. There's a little bit of space in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some newsprint in there just to fill it up. I got a brand new roll of newsprint just the other day. I have a lot of you guys asking me where I get this from. You gotta buy this stuff local because it is so heavy. I mean, one roll of this probably weighs 40 pounds or more. And I buy it from a local shipping supply company called AM Shipping, so if you guys are in Cincinnati, I'll put their info down below. But otherwise, I would just check local shipping supply companies. And I've heard that um, newspapers, like, you know, where they actually print the paper, they usually have leftover rolls that have a little bit on the end that might not be enough for a run of newspapers, but they'll still sell it. So that'd be my advice if you want to find this stuff. All right, it is good to go. The uh, reason I put that newsprint in there is because I don't want that thing moving around at all. And I always like to give packages a shake when I'm done, just to see if I can feel them moving around in there. And this one's not moving at all, so it's good to go. All right, the orders are packed. Let's hit the road. All right, guys, we are here and I brought a helper with me. You ready? Well, too bad. We're getting it anyways. Hey. All right, good deal. Now, this auction did really well. It shocked me. Yeah. I was... Are you shipping a lot? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, the stuff, like, we can't ship that. Right, obviously. Or it's super easy. Yeah. Yeah, I was going after some of them. And like once it got to a certain price, I'm like, these aren't local buyers. These have got to be guys getting shit. A shipped. lot of them were. Yeah. Especially going through it today, a lot of them. Yeah. Like, did you see that 88, 89 clear set? Uh huh. I was. You can buy it on eBay for like two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Less than half. Like. I don't know what the. There was two guys on that. Yeah. But who knows? I can buy. Uh, I don't think so. Is that a serial number? No other markets. It's Friday morning, yesterday after Darcy and I picked up all that auction stuff, we just went ahead and went home. It was getting a little late in the day, so didn't have a chance to pull everything out, but I got it all pulled out now. I'm gonna show you guys what I bought. I spent a total of 
like just under six hundred dollars which is a lot of money but i'm really happy with what i want i was trying to like pick certain pieces that had good value i was watching like a hundred different things in the auction and i only ended up winning about i don't know 15 or 20 something like that first thing is this vintage cleveland browns megaphone this was actually in a lot of stuff there was like seven or eight things and this is what i wanted and it's got the old elf logo or mascot or whatever i don't even know what his name is condition's a little rough but this thing is pretty rare i, I had a really hard time finding uh, a lot of comps i think i found a couple around 50 75 dollars so happy to get that piece i got a lot of cards a whole bunch of cards i recently got back into card collecting and selling and all that stuff it seems like the market is just like booming right now for sports cards so i thought it'd be a good time to get some i got a big box here of all 2020 baseball like freddie freeman patch an autograph a lot of stars in here and there's like panini don russ tops there's just a little bit of everything and then right here this is all cincinnati reds there's i mean like probably a couple thousand of them in here and what i'm going to do with these is put them in my antique booth and price them you know dollar two dollars three dollars each they are small so you know if somebody pocketed one which is you know could happen not really a big deal because none of them are super valuable these right here let me pull these out this is a lot of aristides aquino rookie cards that i'll probably hold on to and then i got a few cards that i bought specifically to get graded because i thought the condition was good and the price was right and i'm about to send off some cards to PSA to get graded and depending on the grade they get that could help the value quite a bit so here we've got Ken Stabler this one I don't think I'll get graded it's a patch card by Jared Goff pretty cool got three different colors on that patch I will probably hang on to this until next season uh, seems like cards sell much better in season so I'll probably just hang on to that for a little while this one I'm getting graded it's a 1973-74 Dr. J julius irving and it's in okay condition whoever stickered this thought it would be a vg i think that's psa 4 maybe still learning about this but i thought that'd be a good card this one i absolutely love this is one of my favorite cards 1969 johnny bench i just love the coloring love the shot it's just a really cool card and i'm gonna get this graded and probably just hang on to it for my own personal collection then we got more cards right here this is oh wait that's just more reds cards um here's vintage basketball which i thought was interesting there's quite a few of them let's see these are from 74 it says 1969 but you can see they're showing 72 73 season stats so these are probably from 74 and i think i'm going to do an ebay auction with these i'll probably you know do i don't know 15 20 cards together you know for an auction and just do multiple auctions and i think those will do pretty well right down here is 1992 tops baseball gold so every card has that gold on the bottom and some of these are worth a little bit of money i think there might be a Derek jeter in here who is that junior felix so i'll look through here and see if there's any stars i got that box pretty cheap this is a riverfront stadium print i think this was in a lot of stuff with the browns this is the old Cincinnati Reds stadium. It's a big panorama of that. And it's numbered to 550 and signed by the artist. So that's pretty neat. Right here we've got some odds and ends. This is a sticker. Actually, I think there might be two of them in there. Johnny Bench had a restaurant. And these are stickers from the bourbon whiskey that they made. This is different. This was a, a giveaway at a Reds game. I think in the 80s. Yeah, expires... September 30th, 1984. It's a little diamond giveaway, and there aren't that many of these out there, so that might bring 15, 20 bucks. We've got some red score books. I got a lot of vintage advertising. Here's like baseball players smoking cigarettes. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Ted Williams smoking Lucky Strike. And I got these really cheap. These aren't worth a ton of money, but I think they're gonna do okay in my antique booth if I price them, you know, four or five dollars each. Here's a couple random magazines that were in that lot with the megaphone. Same with this tray. That was just in a lot of stuff. Bear Bryant. This is a really cool piece. This is a metal Budweiser hydroplane sign. That is selling between 125 and 150 And I totally forgot to mention the trophies I bought. I got a football trophy and a baseball trophy. 
They're from 50s, 60s, and they just have an awesome look to them. Believe it or not, trophies do sell. The vintage ones sell. The ones with, you know, the metal tops and a lot of decoration and just a really cool look. I think these should sell between $100 to $150 each. Might take a little while to sell, but there is a market for this stuff. So if you guys see old vintage trophies, not the ones with like the plastic pieces on top, like you know, really ornate, cool looking trophies, pick them up if they're cheap enough because they do sell. This right here was thrown in on that deal with the um, Browns megaphone. I think that's Bear Bryant, but I'm not positive. And then right here is a Boomer Sison signed golf flag. I guess there was like a golf tournament and he signed one of the flags. And lastly in here, we've got some old boxing cards, cigarette cards. These are really old. I think these are from the 1930s. And they look to be in pretty decent condition for the age, too. John Henry Lewis, Johnny King, Peter Kane, Jock McAvoy. Yeah, these are pretty neat. I'll probably do an auction on eBay for these as well. And then right here, let's see, let me wiggle this rubber band over here. This is a lot more sports advertisements. Some of these might just be photos. Goff, Jack Nicholas. I don't think these are going to do as well as the uh, the baseball players with the cigarettes, but they might sell, and I might only list you know certain ones. But again, they're going to go in my antique booth, and I'll price them pretty cheap. Looks like a lot of these are golf, but yeah, there's some football. Lance Allworth. There's Joe Namath. I know there's some advertised ones in here somewhere. A lot of these are just photos. There's Ben Hogan. Oh, wow, look at that. Larry Johnson Converse. That is cool. Yeah, there's a huge, huge stack of these. I'm really happy with everything I got from that auction. I won it on highbid.com. You guys have never been on there. I really like using that website. There's a lot of different auctioneers all over the country. I think Canada, too that put their auctions on there and the one I bought it from is called Beyond the Door. It's actually a friend of mine named Justin who runs it and he does an awesome job. So if you guys are interested in checking out his auction, I'll put a link down below in the description. All right, I've got about 10 eBay orders to ship out. So let's get to work. All right, first thing I'm shipping out is a video game in C32. Let's see right here, it's Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo that I picked up from the Pickle Resellers. Matter of fact, a lot of these games I'm about to show you guys I picked up from Pickle Resellers. This one sold for $13.99, free shipping. And the buyer also got one in E31. Let's see, Mario is missing for Super Nintendo. Right here. And that one sold for $12.99, free shipping. Your name, Alex, got both of these. Thanks for the support, Alex. Okay, next thing is down in B51. It is Super Mario 3 in the box. Didn't have the owner's manual and the box wasn't in great condition, but it's still sold for $19.99 plus shipping. Next is in B41, another NES game, Dr. Mario. And this one also didn't have the manual and the box was a little bit beat up. That one sold for $9.99 plus shipping. That Dr. Mario game is going out to viewer named Shane. He says, I was looking to pick up this game anyways, and when I saw that my favorite reseller had it listed, at the perfect timing, it was a no-brainer. Thanks, John. Shane, thanks for your support. That is really funny timing. Next is an A31. It is Donkey Kong Country for Super Nintendo. Let's see, I think this game I sold too, so we'll just go ahead and pull that. Donkey Kong Country sold for $23.99, free shipping. And the other game I pulled out of that bin... Uh, Super Mario All-Stars for Super Nintendo. Label was a little bit faded, so that hurt the value sub. That sold for $19.99, free shipping. Next game we're pulling is in E32, right here. Donkey Kong Country 2, again, label was a little bit faded, so that hurt the value. That sold for $19.99, free shipping. All right, next thing is a um, four-channel wireless base station right up here. I have two of these, actually. I got these over a year ago when I bought a bunch of like audio video equipment and just haven't really sold. I had this listed for like $50 or best offer. Somebody sent an offer of $30 plus shipping and I accepted. Next thing is a lot of 20 die cast cars right down here. Let's see if I can pull this up. All right. I got a whole bunch of these from a friend recently. There was like, I don't know, eight, 10 totes of car or something like that. So I decided to do some auctions for them. I started them at a dollar and they sold for $72 plus shipping. And there's some pretty cool ones in here too. Let's see Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, J. 
Jimmy Johnson. There's another Mark Martin. And then there's some Hot Wheels racing ones down here. I have like a little trailer with them. That's neat. Another Hot Wheels racing. Yeah, pretty cool cars. Those cars are going out to viewer named Dan. He says, hey John, glad to support you with another sale and keep the diecast cars coming. Shameless plug here, but I opened a new eBay store, Nutmeg Collectibles, if you ever wanna check it out yourself. Thanks again. Dan, thank you for the support. I'll be happy to check out your eBay store. All right, next is a video game in A31. Brave Fencer Musashi. I got this on a big lot of stuff probably a month or two ago, and the disc was pretty scratched, so I sent it off to be cleaned. That's all for $49.99, free shipping. All right, only two things left to pull. Next is a magazine on B2. It is an old magazine from the 1930s. Let's see, I think it's this one on the bottom, so let me try to move these without doing any damage. This is an old German art magazine. I got a stack of like nine or 10 of these in a recent auction. I think you guys saw that video a week or two ago. I'm into each one for like a dollar or two. So I was really happy to get them. This one sold for $24.99 plus shipping. All right, last thing we're pulling is in D42. Right here. This is a Sega Game Gear. I also picked this up from the Pickle Resellers. Unfortunately, it did not work. I have yet to find a Sega Game Gear that works. It seems like they never, ever work. This, uh, I sold it as is for parts for $14.99 plus shipping. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.